If I had my way, everything would be so nice. This world would be like Paris. No, it would be a paradise. No one would ever have to say, I'm going to get my wish someday. All one would have to do is say, this is my order, if you may. Welcome to another episode of The School Without Walls. I'm Antonio Hobbs, founder and host of this educational program. Uh, I'd like to send a shout out to a few persons before we get started. Uh, Mr. Calvin Booker, who is the president of the University of Arkansas's Alumni Association. He's one of our avid uh, observers of the program. And uh, also, we are working to try to uh, add 1,500 students at least to the university uh, student population starting in September. According to Mr. Booker, we can do that. And I believe we can. Also, like to sh send a shout out to Deacon Robert Hall, uh, Brother Horace Johnson, uh, Stuart at AM and a, uh, St. John AM, a, uh, AME Church, and, uh, and another uh, uh, viewers that I can't uh, call right now. As you know, I'm alone today. I don't have a guest. What we're doing is preparing for February. Uh, February uh, Black History uh, Program 2014. This is pre-recorded. So what we would do is talk a little bit about history, uh, its importance. If we notice in academia, uh, all nations throughout the world celebrate their history. And history is primarily written that the children of those who are writing the history will understand the best of them. And it so happened that uh, the African-American family's history has not been appropriately uh, written in the American uh, 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 classrooms. And as I study in uh, the situation, I realize that it's not the responsibility of the public school system to do this. Each family is responsible for their own history. So let us get busy as an African-American family and, and emphasize the importance of our history because if you don't know your history, then you don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are, then it's difficult for other people to recognize you as any unique uh, family in the community. So we want to emphasize uh, the importance of studying black history. Uh, another thing we want to mention too is that once American, African American history to some degree was placed in the books of the public school system, uh, most of the scholars were European Americans and they started the history of uh, the African American with slavery. So we who are scholars do not agree with that. We think we should go back before slavery because the Africans existed before slavery. And if you notice, whenever you study European history, uh, study the history of the Europeans in America, you go back to Europe, you go back to Greece, you go back to Rome, and then you, you come forward, and then you come to America. And so it should be in our case. So what we're gonna do today is to say to the community especially the African-American community, we're emphasizing the fact that the African-American history goes back as far as mankind. Uh, so what we're going to do today is start with the Africans in the Bible, the Old Testament. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, uh, most of us who are Christians are familiar with the Old Testament and we have story of a great flood that destroyed the original people and uh, with an exception of eight people that was Noah and his three sons and their wives and his wife that was eight people and according to uh, history and uh, most theologians 
uh, that's where this uh, culture came from, those eight people. That was Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Those were the three sons of Noah. Uh, most scholars agree that Ham was the progenitor of what is now called the black man or the black race of the Africans, uh, African Americans, whatever. And uh, Shem also, according to most scholars, was a person of color who uh, is the progenitor for Noah, not Noah, Abraham. And from Abraham came Isaac, Jacob, who was the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then that was Japhat. It is believed that Japhat was the one that later in time became the progenitor of what is now called the white race or the Europeans. They all had a role in, the, in, in life, and they all were to work together in harmony. And it goes back to the fact that three is a trinity, and none of us are complete if we cannot find the three components of that trinity which makes the whole. And this is why it's so important as we, as we move forward in life is that all of the people learn to work together and recognize each other as fellow human beings because all of us were put here to contribute positively to our society. But again, we started with Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And uh, Japheth, not Japheth, but Ham was the first builder of nations and communities and government and things of that nature. That was his role and the role of his, his uh, descendants. Then we had uh, Shem, whereas uh, Abraham came from, and Abraham was the father of Isaac in the Old Testament. Isaac was the father of Esau and Jacob. And of course, Jacob, after he became a man of God, name changed to Israel. He had 12 sons, and therefore we have the 12 uh, nations of Israel. So often we refer to them as Jews. And of course, Judah was one of the 12 sons in that uh, tribe or nation has survived until this day. The others were considered as lost. So we don't want to confuse uh, Judaism and Israel. The Israelites consisted of all 12 of the tribes. Judah was just one tribe that had survived. Uh, so that is uh, the role of Shem's people were to be priests, according to most theologians. You notice that all people of all cultures pretty well govern themselves based on the Ten Commandments that were brought to us through the lineage of Abraham. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, etc. So that was their role. And the Bible said that Japheth, which is the progenitor of the white race, would be in the tent of Shem, the second son, which meant that he would not be involved in the early development of civilization, but he would come on the scene later, which he did. Uh, he has come on the scene in leadership uh, the last, uh, uh, at least since Christ, we put it that way, mainly 100% of the last four or 500 years, but that is during the Industrial Age, Industrial Revolution. That was his scientists and so forth. That came through that family. And it takes all of the families working together to have a whole, and this is where we are today, struggling with that. And much of the lack of that is due to the lack of knowledge and the lack of education. Uh, let us stop here for a break and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Anthony Fernando, a veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm also a graduate of UAPB. I'm currently enrolled in the Master of Science in Aquaculture Fisheries Program. Thanks to my mentor, Dr. Eggleton, I'm acquiring unique skills needed for future employment. Since coming to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, Tony has been involved in a wide range of undergraduate research. Some of this research he plans to publish later this year. UAPB prepares its students for these types of opportunities every day. UAPB is preparing me. 
Uh, those of you who just join us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host of this educational program called The School Without Walls. As you can see, I don't have any guests today. I'm doing more or less a lecture starting part one of the African American History Program for the month of February 2014. Uh, again, I'd like to send a shout out to Deacon Robert Hall, who watches the program quite often and, and encourages me, Horace Johnson, Stewart at uh, St. John AME Church, and certainly Mr. Calvin Booker, president of the uh, uh, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluffs Alumni Association, who is working hard day and night to try to increase the student population here by 1,500 starting in September. And we're asking every uh, alumni member, just think if you would get one person here, we would surpass that. So I'll get back to what I was saying. Why was the history of the African-American distorted or covered up until recent years? Uh, you see, according to uh, a historian by the name of Laurent Bennett, Prior to the settling, uh, establishment, uh, discovery, I should say, of, of the Americans, Americas, uh, there was no such terminology referring to a race as a white race. All of that started in the USA for one purpose and one purpose only was for discrimination against people of color. And of course, uh, it was learned early in American history that the agriculture part of the nation was very central for the economic survival of the people. And uh, it was very hot, and Europeans had not learned how to f farm according to the needs of that time, such as cotton, tobacco, those kinds of products were very, uh, and sugarcane was, was uh, needed throughout the world. And they just weren't prepared to do that, so that was a there was a Catholic priest by the name of Bartholomew told the leadership of the United States of America, that is the white leadership, said, now look, we have people that know how to raise cotton, sugar cane, et cetera. They've been doing it for thousands of years. They are the Africans. Why don't you employ some of them to come to this country and show you how and get involved in this farming process? So we're talking about the beginning of slavery in the United States. Uh, so the, that's, that, that idea took on, so the European uh, Americans went to Africa, and it is said that the early Africans came here as indentured servants and uh, did not come to be enslaved forever. And of course, some came as consultants. Matter of fact, we have a historical record that shows that there was a woman who came from Africa to show the Europeans how to, f to farm. And of course, uh, that was such a lucrative trade until I say personally that the devil got into the people and they said, now suppose we would enslave these people, how rich we could become. So that was the beginning of, of slavery in the USA and throughout the Americas. However, once this took place, that was a conflict between many of the white people of the church, especially they didn't like the idea of enslaving a people in the way that these were enslaved. Now let's put a pinpoint right here so we can understand something that is misleading uh, in, in, in academia even. Uh, you heard the saying that there have always been slavery, so what about slavery? There's never been any type of slavery on earth compared to the, the American slavery of Africans. Throughout the Bible, they talked of slavery, but the better translation would be servants. They were not abused, misused, maimed, and hanged. That was not the case. A good example is the children of Israel. The Bible teaches us that they were enslaved in Egypt but that is not a good translation. They were, became servants of the pharaohs. They were not deprived of their wealth. They were not deprived of their, uh, the, the women, there's no, no, there's no uh, uh, history where the women were abused and misused. They were given 
reparation once they left the country. So there's no comparison. Don't let anybody fool you. Most of the people that we refer to prior to America as slaves, they were actually friends. They were servants. Like many of the people who established the uh, Greek nation were African servants. They were people who served under the government of that nation. Public servants were translated as slaves. So I'm saying that to say this. There's nowhere that anybody's been abused like the African in America. So we want to make that very clear. But after that struggle between the two groups of whites, some said that's, that's, that's wrong to abuse people like that. We don't want to do that. So they had to start covering up truth. But once they, just, they got enough people to believe that African Americans, no, not African Americans, but Africans had never contributed to civilization, that they were subhumans, and they treated them that way. And after the elders that came in here from Africa died out, then the children behaved as though they might have been heathens because they were refused education and so forth. So that cover-up was designed to justify slavery. That was the purpose of that. So what we're going to do now is pause for a few minutes and then we'll be back to conclude with the uh, Africans that we find in the Old Testament. Ma, what's this? It's for you, to remind you where you can finally get a health insurance plan. <sighs> Ma, you know I can't afford it. But for the first time you can. You go to the healthcare.gov website, compare quality plans, and you could get help paying for it. Look, these plans will cover checkups, injuries, prescriptions. Are you ever gonna stop worrying about me? When you get covered, I will. Let your kids know about the health insurance marketplace at healthcare.gov. Those of you who have just joined us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host of this educational program. Today I'm doing a lecture on uh, the, the black history. This is uh, part one of a series of uh, programs we will be doing uh, highlighting the history of African Americans. And today what I'm doing is trying to establish a foundation to let us understand that uh, Africans were involved in history way before slavery. So we're going to conclude with uh, the Africans or blacks in the Bible. Uh, so Ham was one of the sons of Noah, and uh, uh, Ham's offsprings are characterized throughout the Bible, and their nations are the first to be mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 2, 10 to 13. If you read Genesis 2, 10 to 13, you will uh, see the descendants of Ham. Within the past 150 years, our archaeologists, anthropologists have done research in the ruins of Ethiopia, which is in Africa, Egypt in Africa, and Canaan, which is, uh, was once called Palestine, and today it's called Israel, and has produced overwhelming evidence that the children of Ham had developed nations and civilizations as old as man's history. Uh, we have reference by Professor C. I'm going to spell his last name, S-E-I-G-N-O-B-O-S. -O -O in his book, History of Ancient Civilizations, state that religion and government, as well as the skills of sculpture, writing, painting, weaving clothes, working metal, and cultivating the soil were developed by the, uh, he used the term the Negroes, uh, while the Jews, Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, were still in a savage stage. Uh, the world's culture is deeply indebted to the children of Ham for their biblical involvement. The Ethiopians worshipped Israel's God. Uh, during the Queen of Sheba's reign, and remain Christians to this day, in case you don't know who the Queen of Sheba was, in some places she's called the Queen of the South. 
Uh, she was a person that would be classified as an African. Uh, Sheba was what is now Ethiopia and the southern part of the what is called the Arabian Peninsula. That was Sheba. Sheba was one of the sons, of, I should say the grandson of Ham. Sheba was Cush's, one of Cush's sons who settled that part of the world. That part now is called Ethiopia and uh, the southern pen of the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. The Queen of Sheba was the one who went to visit King Solomon. And of course, she had heard about his wisdom. And she went there and spent some time with King Solomon. And of course, she became one of King Solomon's wives and bore him a child. And she, he wanted her to live there, but she went back as queen and carried the son back. And uh, of course, the Jews of Ethiopia, the black Jews of Ethiopia can trace themselves back to King Solomon. And there's, there isn't another group of people on earth that have that direct lineage, such as the Ethiopian uh, black Jews, uh, Israelites, you should say. Now, uh, we also mentioned Israel. Israel, remember who Israel is, Israel was a man named Jacob who was one of the sons of Isaac. Isaac had twins, uh, Esau and Jacob. Jacob was a bad boy in his early life. He stole his brother's birthrights, according to the Bible, but somewhere along the way he met God, and his name was changed to Israel. And he had five sons. Over hundreds of years, the sons were referred to as nations. So the house of Israel simply means the five, the twelve sons of Jacob, Israel. Now, we're reaching a conclusion here. Should we have just enough time to name the sons of Ham and their descendants found in Genesis 2, 10 through 13. All right, all right. We have Ham had Cush found of Ethiopia, Mizraim, found of Egypt, Put, the found of Libya, and Canaan, the found of the Canaanites, or what we might call the Phoenicians, and later on that place was called Palestine. And uh, in the Bible, these are some tribes that interacted throughout the Bible with the Israelites, and they were the Amorites, Canaanites, Cush, from Cush came Cushan, from Cush came Cushite, and the Cushanites, Heth, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, uh, the Mizraims, Put, and Sidon. There are about 13 nations that we read about in the Bible daily that most of us don't know that they would be called Africans today are black because nobody taught us. So we want you to be aware of that. The Amorites were uh, was, uh, called Highlanders, descendants of Canaan. Then Canaan, the term uh, was called Umbel. He was a fourth son of Ham. Cush meant black, first son of Ham. Cushion was a group of people that had, was was dark in color, called blackness, derived from Cush. All right, the Cushites were the Ethiopians, derived from Cush. And then the C-U-S-H-I-T-E, there's a different C-U-S-H-I, they were also a group of Ethiopians derived, derived from Cush. H-E-T-H, -E Heth, we hear the Hittites, that was from the second son of Canaan. And Canaan, of course, was a founder of a, a place called Canaan that the Bible teaches us that it was given to uh, Abra Abraham and his descendants. And of course, if you know the story where Joshua and Caleb entered into Canaan and they had this great battle where Joshua marched around Jericho seven times and etc. and the walls fell down, that was in the land of Canaan. How much more time do we have, Randy? 
We have one minute to conclude today. And let us be clear that Canaan was never overtaken by the Israelites. They found a place to dwell there, but the people co-mangled over thousands of years. And we want to conclude with this and be clear. There's never been a race of people called Israelites. They were always mixed with the people that I just mentioned. They were nations, but not races. Many of us in this confused stage of racism and talking about race, we confuse nationalities with race. That was a Jewish race. That was a, no, 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 not scratch that. That was a Jewish nation, but never a Jewish race because they were intermingled with all the people just mentioned. And uh, you couldn't look at a person, in other words, and tell an Amorite from a, from a Jew. That's what I'm trying to say. I hope this has blessed you to have a better understanding. The scripture teaches us to get wisdom and knowledge, but in all they're getting, get understanding. And Brother Robert Hall and Brother J Horace Johnson, Brother Calvin Booker, hopefully that someone has been blessed with this truth. Thank you. And we will continue uh, with more contemporary African-American history in days to come. This is simply episode one of a series that will be running in the month of February.